Max has an enormous library with so many movies. Just the thriller genre alone is hundreds of movie options and new stuff is added all the time. And to be honest, not every single one of them is a gem, so it can be hard to find the one that's right for you. So welcome to The Binge List. I'm Greg and we make recommendations for movies and TV shows you can access from the comfort of your own home. And today we're gonna talk about thrillers if the title and the thumbnail didn't already give that away. And not just thrillers, but 15 of the best options you can check out on Max right now. And I rank them based on my own viewing experience watching them, but there are really some awesome options on today's list. So stop mindlessly scrolling, stop wasting your time, and let's jump in and check out this list. Tell me while he does it. Good morning. Everything is normal, except... What do you want? Is that something you'd say? Normal Monday? The first movie on our list today is No Sudden Move. This is a crime thriller set in the 1950s Detroit. We follow Kurt, a recently paroled ex-con who is hired for a seemingly simple job, jump in, steal some documents from a house. However, the job quickly unravels as Kurt and his two accomplices discover there's more to the situation than they initially understood. As they delve deeper, they find themselves entangled in a complex web of deceit, betrayal, and hidden motives involving powerful individuals and dangerous secrets. This film has a stellar cast with a lot of familiar faces like John Hamm, David Harbour, Kieran Culkin, and you get outstanding performances from the leading actors, particularly Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro, and Brendan Fraser. The film recreates the 1950s Detroit perfectly with its really distinct visual style and even small things that fit this time period like the architecture, interior designs, the vehicles, and even some of the slang that they used in the movie. And it really showed that they paid a lot of attention to the details. This one does have a bit of a complex plot. It's very intriguing but complex as it's presented in the perspective of various characters that requires you to pay close attention with its layered narrative and unexpected twists. This is a unique crime drama depicting this 1950s Detroit with this solid cast, an awesome option for a thrilling movie night. I got her. My second pick on the list is the techno thriller Kimmy. This is set in Seattle during the COVID pandemic where we meet Angela, played by Zoe Kravitz, who is an agoraphobic tech worker who works from home reviewing audio streams. The company she works for developed this smart speaker Kimmy, which uses human monitoring to improve search algorithms. One night while she's reviewing a data stream, Angela stumbles upon what appears to be a violent crime. Determined to uncover the truth, she must overcome her fear of leaving the apartment and venture into the city navigating the complexities of corporate bureaucracy and the dangers of investigating a potential crime. Zoe Kravitz is on her own a lot in this film, so the movie really rests on her performance. And she does bring Angela to life on the screen, highlighting her tech savvy abilities, her resourcefulness, her strong morals, all this comes together on the screen. I do wanna mention some of the plot elements feel like a bit of a stretch in this one. According to this film, accessing sensitive information is a lot like ordering it on Amazon. But if you can look past this small thing, it does build solid suspense and keeps you engaged throughout the story. And on top of the suspense, it also explores some interesting yet very relevant themes like surveillance and privacy concerns as technology becomes more prevalent in our daily lives. Despite having a very limited theatrical release, Kimmy is a unique and suspenseful crime thriller worth giving a shot. You're not exactly a department favorite. Things probably changed a lot since you left. You still gotta catch him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that much has changed then, right? <laughs> On to our third pick, and it's a neo-noir crime thriller set in the 1990s Los Angeles, and that is The Little Things. Kern County Sheriff's Deputy Joe, aka Deke, is sent to Los Angeles to retrieve evidence for a case. While there, he gets sucked back into his old life and he's unofficially drawn into a serial murder investigation. Deke's unorthodox methods clash with the by-the-book approach detective on the case, but they pursue a mysterious suspect who appears to be playing a twisted game with them throughout this film. I really jumped in to watch this movie because it has a ridiculous cast leading the way with Denzel Washington, Rami Malek, and Jared Leto. Once I got in there and watched it, I can safely say that all three deliver captivating performances and exhibit dynamic chemistry between their characters on screen. I did read that some found the plot a little predictable, and yes, yeah, some parts can feel obvious, but there's still plenty of suspense and parts of the narrative that keep you guessing all the way until the end. This is a crime thriller, but it also has a lot of character-driven components where Deke is actually trying to find redemption in many ways. 
really attempting to prevent Rami Malek's character from falling into the same personal torment that he's endured. The script for The Little Things was written all the way back in 1993 and it finally hit screen in 2021. It was certainly worth the wait and it's worth watch on Max. Number four on our list is a flip of the typical Liam Neeson trope where instead of his character tracking someone down, he's the one being hunted down in the gray. This is a suspenseful survival thriller set in the Alaskan wilderness where Neeson is tasked with protecting a group of workers on their way back from an oil rig when their plane crashes in a remote snowy region. With most passengers killed and the survivors facing harsh conditions, they must remain vigilant to avoid attacks from a pack of wolves hunting them down. He must draw on his survival skills and inner strength to lead the remaining individuals to find their way to safety while confronting his own personal demons and battling the unforgiving environment. This performance from Liam Neeson really highlights highlights his ability to convey emotional turmoil, resilience, and just the determination to survive in this film. It certainly plays on common fears like the dark and isolation, which creates this extremely suspenseful atmosphere, along with the constant threat of these wolves in the background. It focuses a bulk of the film on the action and the survival aspects, but there's also an emotional engagement with the character's internal struggles. And one of my favorite parts of this film was it was shot on location in various remote areas of Alaska, posing logistical challenges due to the harsh weather conditions of course, but it was worth it as it's created this amazing backdrop for the film. This is a movie that is visually stunning and shows off Liam Neeson's acting that is certainly worth checking out. I just killed your boy, Sean. I just killed Danny. I had to. He was gonna shoot my son. Number five, we stick with Neeson, and again in this one he's being hunted down, and this is Run All Night. A familiar action role for Neeson where he's protecting his kid, and in this one he didn't lose his kid or they didn't get abducted, so it's a slight variation, but this is a pure action thriller centered around Jimmy, played by Neeson, as an aging and alcoholic hitman for the Irish mob. Jimmy's relationship with his son Mike is strained due to his violent profession, however their lives become intertwined after the execution of a former boss's son forces him to go on the run with Mike and protect him from the vengeful mob. He confronts his past sins and fights for his family's survival while navigating the treacherous underworld. There is a laundry list of awesome actors in this film with Neeson, you get Joel Kinnaman, Ed Harris, Vincent D'Onofrio, Bruce McGill, Boyd Holbrook, Common, and way more to be honest. But Liam Neeson and Joel Kinnaman are awesome action stars, obviously, but in this one they give a solid emotional portrayal as well. They explore the dynamic father-son relationship and the lengths someone would go to to protect their loved ones. If you like action, this is the perfect option for you because there is tons of it and the action is fast paced, well choreographed, and intense throughout the entire film. With Hollywood action films comes thick plot armor, surviving gunshots or evading capture in some unrealistic ways, but a small blemish in what is still a solid action thriller for your next movie night. Hey, what is the explosion? My sixth pick on this list is Greenland. This is an apocalyptic family disaster film set in a near future where a giant comet is hurtling towards Earth threatening to cause a global extinction event. John is a structural engineer who is chosen through a lottery system to be evacuated to a secure government shelter in Greenland alongside his estranged wife and diabetic son. As the comet fragments begin impacting Earth causing widespread destruction and chaos, this family faces a perilous journey across the country battling other desperate survivors and the collapsing infrastructure in a desperate attempt to reach the Greenland shelter. For anybody who has a family or children specifically, this thriller hits a bit differently. Building suspense and keeping you engaged throughout the character's journey to protect the ones he loves from the unfolding disaster. You really feel this because of the acting of Gerard Butler, Morena Bakarin, and Roger Dale Floyd, the main family unit that you follow. They do a fabulous job conveying the family's struggles, desperation, and resilience in the face of the overwhelming circumstances, despite making some absolutely terrible decisions along the way. I also found the film's depiction of societal breakdown and the struggles for survival during a global disaster to be exactly what I'd expect to happen, and definitely makes you think, what would you do to protect your family in this type of situation? This is an impressive disaster movie that benefits from its human approach, which results in an extremely intense and emotional film. You're going on a journey. A journey through memory. 
All you have to do is follow my voice. The next movie on our list, I was honestly shocked to see how low it was rated on IMDb with only a 5.9, but I really, really enjoy this thriller option with my number seven pick, Reminiscence. This is a science fiction neo-noir thriller set in a future Miami that's largely submerged due to climate change. The main character, Nick, runs a business where people can relive their memories, but his life takes a turn when a mysterious woman walks into his shop looking to find a lost key. As Nick delves deeper into her request, he becomes increasingly entangled in a complex web of love, loss, and a dangerous conspiracy, uncovering shocking truths about the past and facing the consequences of his own choices. It's always cool to see a world like this that looks like you could just step right into it. And this film does look really cool and it has really awesome visual effects and production design, bringing the unique flooded Miami setting to life, creating this truly immersive atmosphere. I really enjoy the duo of Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson since they co-starred in the film The Greatest Showman. And you have to appreciate the acting of Jackson and Ferguson in this film as well. They portray these complex characters and this very unique relationship. This film does also have a very intriguing premise. The concept of reliving memories through technology, which might not be that far away to be honest, but also thinking about its impact on someone's emotions. This is a cool movie with a unique premise and a great duo leading the way, well worth an hour and 50 minute runtime. The eighth movie on this list premiered at Sundance, received awards and praises from critics, but is definitely a little lesser known than some of the others, and that is the movie Monos. This is a Colombian war drama set in a remote mountainous region of Latin America that follows a group of eight teenagers known only by their codenames who serve as guerrilla soldiers. They are tasked with guarding a mysterious hostage while undergoing harsh training and engaging in bizarre rituals. They're isolated from the outside world and grappling with their own adolescent struggles, and we quickly see the fragile reality of their situation start to unravel. This movie is truly visually stunning. The film's cinematography shows off its breathtaking landscapes and a unique visual style that elevates the atmosphere of the film. I did not recognize many of the actors in this film either, which is why it took me so long to check it out in the first place, but the performances of the young actors are all in and done so well. There is raw emotion in their portrayals of these characters, along with their unique but also familiar struggles. This is a film that uses an unconventional narrative structure as well, some non-linear time, an unreliable narrator, and a very ambiguous ending that leaves some room for interpretation. This is more of an art house film than the others on this list, but it is an exciting film worth giving a shot for the stunning visuals and the solid acting from this young cast. Why do you want to join the CIA? I'd like to help my country make a difference in the world. The average test time is five hours. I'm done, sir. It's been 40 minutes. 38 minutes. Next up at number nine is a movie based on a true story, and that is the movie Snowden. This follows the story of Edward Snowden, who was a former CIA and NSA contractor who becomes obsessed with the vast extent of government surveillance programs. As he works his way through various intelligence agencies, Snowden witnesses firsthand the expansive reach of these programs, raising ethical concerns about the legality and potential for abuse. Driven by his conscience, he decides to leak classified information to the press and exposing the government's global surveillance activities. Even though this is a story that most are probably familiar with, the film tells the story in a way that still creates suspense and keeps you engaged throughout, depicting the challenges and consequences of Snowden's actions. Because this is a true story, the exploration of real world events and its portrayal of Snowden's motivations feel very engaging, but even more so thought provoking. It certainly makes you think about the important questions about individual privacy and government power. When I talk about great actors, for whatever reason, I feel like the acting of Joseph Gordon-Levitt escapes me, but this is another awesome performance from him, along with the supporting cast like Shailene Woodley, Zachary Quinto, and Thomas Wilkinson that bring these real and very complex characters to life as they explore these ethical dilemmas. Regardless of your opinion on Edward Snowden, the film itself has a compelling story around a historic event with solid performances and plenty of suspense. Well worth a watch. There were 24 kidnappings in Mexico City in the last six days. Have you protected a lot of children before, Mr. Creasy? My 10th pick is a revenge thriller set in Mexico City, and this is Man on Fire, where we follow John, who is a troubled alcoholic former CIA operative who reluctantly accepts a job as a bodyguard for the nine-year-old daughter of a wealthy businessman. As John forms an unlikely bond with this young girl, she is tragically kidnapped 
Driven by guilt and a desire for vengeance, he embarks on a brutal and relentless pursuit of her abductors, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake as he dismantles the entire kidnapping ring. Unlike Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I never forget to talk about Denzel Washington when I talk about amazing actors. He is amazing, and I grew up watching him in Training Day, Remember the Titans, and Inside Man, and he brings his amazing talent to this film, along with a great performance from a very young Dakota Fanning. And they have this very compelling and emotional dynamic between these two characters in this film. Man on Fire is a very straightforward thriller. It has some gripping and suspenseful moments with a ton of intense action sequences that absolutely keep you engaged. On top of the action, the film explores John's road to redemption and his grief, adding to the depth of the story beyond just the revenge plot. This is another thrilling option on this list with tons of accolades. It's nominated for several awards, it's been praised by critics and viewers for its compelling story, engaging action sequences, and top-notch performances. Well worth exploring. As a quadriplegic, it must be frustrating for you, someone who likes to get things done with their hands. My 11th pick is a movie that I've spoke about before and I've recommended before and it's definitely worth making this list and that is Upgrade. This is an epic sci-fi thriller set in a near future society that is heavily reliant on advanced technology. Gray is a low tech mechanic who lives a peaceful life with his wife until a brutal mugging leaves her dead and him paralyzed. Offered a controversial and an experimental treatment, Gray agrees to have a powerful computer chip called STEM implanted into his spine allowing him to regain control of his body. However, STEM turns out to be more than just a mobility aid, and Gray and STEM embark on a quest for vengeance against his attackers, blurring the lines between man and machine. This movie certainly gives off a Tom Hardy Venom movie vibe, with the entity living in your head that only you can hear type of thing, but with a significantly lower budget, they explore it in a very different way, which means that the concept does feel original. It explores the ethical implications of advanced technology and human computer integration. My favorite thing about this movie is the acting of Logan Marshall Green. He is absolutely phenomenal in this, portraying himself in these situations where it really looks like he is not controlling his own body. Along with the voice of Simon Maiden as STEM, they are an engaging duo and the dynamic between the human and technological elements works very well on screen with impressive visuals and super creative action sequences. This film also jumps right into the fast paced narrative, thrilling action sequences and creative use of special effects right from the get go and there's very few if any wasted scenes. Upgrade has a significant cult following at this point, but it is a must watch for anybody who enjoys a blend of sci-fi, thriller, and action elements. Let's finish it. I should have probably tried to put this as the seventh recommendation here on this list, but this movie is far better than the seventh best on this list. So my number 12 pick is the movie Seven. This is another crime thriller where two detectives, William and David, find themselves partnered to investigate a series of brutal murders. As they delve deeper into the case, they discover that the killings are not random, but they follow a disturbing pattern, with each victim representing one of the seven deadly sins. As the pressure mounts and the killer remains at large, the detective's pursuit of justice takes them on a psychological toll, blurring the lines between good and evil and forcing them to confront their own demons. Seven has a dark and eerie atmosphere in this movie. It has a suspenseful narrative and unpredictable twists that keep you heavily invested throughout this film. And Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt, I mean, need I say more? There are amazing performances and the chemistry between these two charismatic actors is top notch. This movie is far from a cheery film as it explores a lot of dark and complex themes like morality and the nature of evil from numerous angles. So if you're looking for a happy ending, this is probably not going to be the one for you. But if you enjoy complex films with dark atmospheres and Freeman and Pitt, of course, this is a stellar choice for your next movie night. Uh, Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? My number 13 movie on the list is kind of sort of a superhero genre movie, but also at the same time, not really. And that is the movie, The Joker. This is right up there with one of my favorite Joker portrayals of all time. This film is a psychological thriller offering a dark and gritty exploration of the origins of this iconic Batman villain. We follow Arthur Fleck, who is a mentally ill and struggling party clown in the 1980s Gotham City, who faces constant societal neglect and ridicule. As he grapples with his mental health issues and deteriorating personal life, Arthur descends deeper into despair and isolation through a series of tragic encounters and societal failures that push him towards 
violence and this radical transformation. Embracing the persona of the Joker. When I was putting this together and I was thinking about this film, I really thought about how much I enjoyed Heath Ledger as the Joker and how Joaquin Phoenix's Joker character was very different. And I really enjoyed this movie more when I looked at it that way. How yes, these are the same characters, but at the same time, they're not the same character. If that makes any sense. They are both fully committed to these powerful and captivating portrayals, but Phoenix's Arthur Fleck slash Joker certainly goes a different way. He feels more out of control as he adopts the Joker moniker, and this character is disturbing and psychotic and far more emotional and less tactical than Ledger's Joker. The cinematography and score in this film create this unique vibe that feels really cool and it has an immersive atmosphere that takes you on a ride with this character as he descends into this madness. And I'm more of a Marvel fan so I don't know everything about the Batman universe, but from what I do know, it does seem like this film strayed from the established lore, and depending on your opinion that could be no big deal or a total deal breaker, but it did allow them to tell somewhat of a unique and standalone story that explores this character a bit more with no connections to other DC projects. Regardless of your opinion of DC lore or Ledger vs Phoenix, this is a very well made movie, I think worth checking out. What you say boys? You got crosses in your heels. Nails. Shaped like crosses. What for? Ward off evil spirits. The 14th pick is a Matthew McConaughey led coming of age drama with more than enough thrilling elements to make this list and that is Mud. This film is set on the banks of the Mississippi River where two young boys encounter a mysterious man named Mud played by McConaughey. He is a fugitive hiding on an island in the river and Mud claims to be on the run to protect his lost love from a dangerous man. Torn between their sense of adventure and potential consequences, the boys find themselves drawn into Mud's world, forging an unlikely bond while navigating the complexities of loyalty and friendship. I've talked about a ton of great actors with strong performances on this list and Matthew McConaughey is 100% at the top of that list and his performance in Mud may be one of his best. His charisma and emotional vulnerability easily draws you into this character despite all the secrecy of his past and he works so well with the young actors Ty Sheridan and Jacob Laughlin showcasing this unique bond that is forged between all the characters. This film has a very beautiful but minimalistic setting. The cinematography captures the beauty and the atmosphere of the Mississippi Riverbanks. And because you are following these two younger characters throughout the film, I thought it was very interesting how they explored loyalty and the power of friendship through their eyes, offering you just a different perspective on those topics. This is another movie with multiple award nominations on this list. This one is a phenomenal option for a compelling movie night, worth checking out. Come in close, because the more you think you see, easier it'll be to fool you. The last movie on this list today is a personal favorite of mine. I enjoy the cast, the concept, the magic. It is just a fun ride and that is Now You See Me. This one is a heist thriller centered around a group of talented magicians known as the Four Horsemen. FBI agent Dylan Rhodes and Interpol agent Al Madre are tasked with investigating the four horsemen who pull off a seemingly impossible bank heist during one of their live performances. As the investigation unfolds, the agents must unravel the magician's elaborate illusions and hidden motives, while the four horsemen continue their audacious performances with each heist surpassing the last. Beyond the cast, one of my favorite aspects of this film is they don't waste time getting right into the fast-paced action, clever magic tricks, witty dialogue, and tons of different components that make it fun and entertaining. And as I mentioned, the cast is great in this one, including Jesse Eisenberg, Isla Fisher, Woody Harrelson, Dave Franco, Mark Ruffalo, and Morgan Freeman. The entire cast is charismatic and contributes different elements that add to the film's overall energy and enjoyment. And this film is essentially one giant magic trick, built from tons of smaller magic tricks and things that might not appear like a trick that make this plot so intriguing, with unexpected twists and turns that keep you intrigued the entire time. Yes, some of the narrative in this one can be a stretch and even a tad unrealistic, but this is an awesome story, it's so much fun, well worth checking out. That is going to do it for the list today, everybody. Check out one of our other Max recommendations here. Like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us get our recommendations out to others looking for great options to stream at home. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you in the next one.